Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read chapter 9, The Midnight Duel, page 143 to 145. Harry had never believed he would meet a boy he hated more than Dudley, but that was before he met Draco Malfoy. Still, first year Gryffindors only had potions with the Slytherins. So they didn't have to put up with Malfoy much. Or at least they didn't until they spotted a notice pinned up in the Gryffindor common room that made them all groan. Flying lessons would be staring starting on Thursday and Gryffindor and Slytherin would be learning together. Typical, said Harry darkly. Just what I always wanted to make a fool of myself on a broomstick in front of Malfoy. He had been looking forward to learning to fly more than anything else. You don't know that to make a fool of yourself, said Ron reasonably. Anyway, I know Malfoy is always going on about how good he's at the Quidditch, but I bet that's all talk. Malfoy certainly did talk about flying a lot. He complained loudly about first years Never getting on the house, Kirich dreamed and told long, boastful stories that always seemed to end with him, narrowly escaping muggles in helicopters. He wasn't the only one, though, the way the Seamus Finnegan told it. He'd spend most of his childhood zooming around the countryside on his broomstick. Even Ron would tell anyone who had listened about the time he had almost hit a hang glider on Charlie's old broom. Everyone from wizarding families talked about Kirich constantly. Ron had already had a big argument with Dean Thomas, who shared their dormitory about soccer. Ron couldn't see what was exciting about a game with only one ball when no one was allowed to fly. Eddie had cut Ron, prodding Dean's posture of a West Ham soccer team, trying to make the players move. Neville had never been on a broomstick in his life because... His grandmother had never let him near one. Privately, Harry felt she would have had good reason because Neville managed to have an extraordinary number of accidents, even with both feet on the ground. Hermione Granger was almost as nervous about flying as Neville was. This was something you couldn't learn by heart uh, out of a book, not that she hadn't tried. At breakfast on Thursday, she bored them all stupid with flying tips. She'd gotten out of a library book called The Kiddish Through the Ages. Neville was hanging on to her every word, desperate for anything that might help him hang on to his broomstick later. But everybody else was very pleased when Hermione's lecture was interrupted by the arrival of the mail. Harry hadn't had a single letter since Hagrid's note, something that Malfoy had been quick to notice, of course. Malfoy's eagle owl was always bringing, bringing him packages of sweets from home, which he opened glowingly at the Slytherin table. A barn owl brought Neville a small package from his grandmother. He opened it excitedly and showed them a glass bowl the size of a large marble, which seemed to be full of white smoke. It's a remember, remember all. He explained, Gran knows I forget things. This tells you if there is something you've forgotten to do. Look, you hold it tight like this, and if it turns red, oh, his face fell, because the uh, remember all has suddenly glowed scarlet. You've forgotten something. Nebo was trying to remember what he had forgotten when Draco Valpoy, who was uh, passing the Gryffindor table, snatched the remember all out of his hand. Harry and Ron jumped to their feet. They were half hoping for a reason to fight Malfoy, but Professor McGonagall, who could spot trouble quicker than any teacher in the school, was there in a flash. What's going on? Malfoy's got my rememberal, Professor. Scowling, Malfoy quickly dropped the rememberal back on the table. Just looking, he said, and he slipped away with crab and coil behind him. At 3.30 that afternoon, Harry, Ron, and other Gryffindors hurried down the front steps onto the grounds for their first flying lesson. 
was a clear, breezy day, and the grass grass rippled under their feet as they marched down the sloping lawns toward a smooth, flat lawn on the opposite side of the grounds to the forbidden forest, whose trees were swaying darkly in the distance. The end.